Sunday, and this is the Botanica culture lesson from A to Z, going through my Bible, Botanica's orchids, I call it illustrated because it's got a lot of pictures in it. Um, this is what I find to be very key as far as learning how to uh, learning what the species are that you're growing, learning what the hybrids are, the parents of the hybrids. You have to know what the species are. And I find it important to know where the plant comes from and their rainfall, their temperature, those things, humidity. So we are on letter C. Today I'm having coffee and oatmeal. I've already ate my toast. Before I get started on this, this is because this whole series started because of my influence, my being influenced so much on books because initially I'm so old there was no internet when I started growing orchids and I've already done that video and explain all that I just want to show you these books were the first ones that I got because there was no internet as I said so books really were all that I had to learn about orchids and these books really took me beyond phalaenopsis and cattleyas and dendrobiums because especially Taylor's Guide, um, really the pictures were the only thing that would catch my eye because I did not know what orchids were as far as the diversity of orchids and the different species. So by having books like this and this, Simon and Schuster, which I know I got at Smith and Hawkin before they closed, um, you know, I remember very vividly going through this book a million times and going to this plant and saying and reading about it, the fragrance. And I mean, I know that's why I have gotten like fixated on Deichi, but it was because of this book. These books is what got me fascinated more into orchids. I just saw something. Yeah. Pandorata. So you can see how these books were crucial. So anyway, let's go on. We're on letter C. And C. Here we go. C. Get Leia. So we're just going to start turning the page. And as usual, I will go and find my species if I have them. And I don't have any Khadijas, no Caladinias. Nope. No Calanthes. Nope. Nope. No Calypsos. No Catacetum species. Now we're at Cat Leia's. Now, as far as the Catleas, as far as culture is concerned, the, the diversity of their area, this, that's just exactly what that says. They're just, it's a, there's no point in even talking about their, where they're from because they're from all over. But I will just say that they like wet, dry, and they are epiphytic, and they are intolerant of stale media. So, I have not had an Aclandii, have not had an Amethyst. Amethystoglossa. Now I do love Orantiaca from Mexico, grows on rocks and trees, exposed conditions. As we all know, this is a bifoliate. Um, it says to leaves, and it is not a fragrant flower. My Orantiacas, the ones that I know, I might have some others tucked around in different places, but I know that there's an Arantiaca spot with a new growth. And this, no, it's not Arantiaca. So, okay, well, I just, that's one. And yeah, it's put up its growth and then it will put up a sheath and then it will bloom from that sheath in the spring. Okay, so for the next cat layer, I should have just stayed over there because it's Boringiana and says it's easy to grow. There is the flower picture of Boringiana. 
It says it's easy to grow species grows in trees near streams. So they're able to swell in shape and the flowers appear in autumn and early winter, which they do. They put up their growth, which it is right now, and then it will put up its sheath and then it will bloom immediately from that sheath. Now it is already yeah, August, so it should, if it, if it gets a strong enough growth, which it is still uh, recuperating, um, we will see. I did have a Dawian, Dormaniana. I don't know why, because it is a cool grower and it has this weird um, cycle where I think it likes two dry periods after two wet periods, so I don't know. Forbes, Forbes CI is one of my very favorites. There are lots of um, color forms of Forbes CI. Um, you can see this is, I think this is also from Brazil. Yeah, swampy coastal areas. So, two leaves, flowers during the spring and the summer. I have not had any of those. I did have a labiata long, long time ago. It was a pink labiata, I want to say, because labiata is the lip, and so labiata is characteristic of that. Ludiola is also one of my favorites. I love Forbesia and Ludiola. It is a very miniature plant. Mine did bloom, and my Ludiola. Well, let me see if there's any more. No, I haven't had any of those, but my Ludiola, yeah, it has creeping rhizomes and it flowers. It says it flowers throughout the year, but mine really just flowers at one time. I find that Ludiola needs a little bit of a rest after it flowers. Um, my Ludiola is right here. And it actually just got a little bit of a repot. Um, it's putting up that growth and it's got a little bit of a, looks like a mealy bug there, which I will get that. And that's why it's sitting up here actually because it was sprayed and I took all the sheets off of it. But it bloomed from this growth really nicely. Um, back over to the other Cattleyas, which would be beautiful. This is my Bolringiana. And now you can see how this is last year's growth. It actually did give me a little bit of a sheet. But then this is this year's growth. Oh, a lot better and stronger. So I wanted to get up to there, so we'll see. We shall see. What was the other one that I had? I don't think. Yeah, here's another Arantiaca. That's a red Arantiaca. That was a gift. I think that's all the Cattleyas that were listed that I have. I am really getting away from Cattleyas for the most part. I really am, because it's just difficult to handle just because of the size. Sorry to say. Okay, yeah, there's Ludiola. Let me see the other ones that I did I show you. Uh, yeah, my Forbes CI, I showed you that. And I showed you my Borinjana. And Velutina Wakariana. Now I did have Wakariana for years. And I love Wakariana. It is a very small plant that the flowers are bigger than the pseudobulbs. Um, it is one of those Brazilian species, lipophytic, likes high light and hot, con hot conditions, but they want fast drainage. Um, I think these, when I had mine, mine took a lot of moisture. I planted, I had mine in moss, and when I had it in moss, it actually bloomed for me and then it died because it died when, it, when my greenhouse got cold. So that is that unfortunately, but beautiful. And that looks like my cat layers. No, it doesn't look like my cat layers, but that looks like that's the end of the cat layers. Oh, here we go. Cat layopsis. Nope. Nope. Serratus stylus. Now, I did have a serratus stylus once. It was requisquama. Requis, um, and this is a lovely species. It looks kind of like a duck really. You can see these are the there's the pseudobulb and there's the leaf and it gets those little little nice uh, red vivid little flowers it's a miniature plant you can see it only gets up to well it says 16 inches but it's more like a rambler kind of like um maxillarias but the culture of it is says it's similar to areas um small flowers hot humid hot humid and moderately shady short resting period Kaisis. Now, I am in love with Kaisis is one. I have one 
Kaisis now, which is Kaisis aurea. I would love to have more. Kaisis are big plants. Kaisis are also from Mexico. They're club-shaped pseudobulbs. They grow similar to catacetums, although they don't want a strict rest. They want higher, cooler light um, in the in the winter time, but they still want high humidity, and they still want to be watered a little bit. Um, you can see here it says during the growth periods it's high humidity and ample water and they do like a mix of dreams freely although they are greedy waterers in the summer when they are what when they um when they are in growth period their flowers are really nice i think there might be a fragrance to the one that i had which is which is aria i think levis might be a synonym but it looks it looks similar to that or the it looks more like well I'll put a picture of mine but that's pretty much how you grow them um, they like shade but in the winter they like more light and cooler and as, as it says water less frequency so that's kysis and my kysis that I have is recovering as I said here's my kysis aria you can see it almost died off and it really just started with that bulb it put up this bulb last year and then this year it's got this bulb see it's planted in rock with bark and i know there's some sphagnum mixed in there somewhere but that is kysis really you can just sit these in water and let them sit and they will drink and drink all day and grow and they would love it really nice plant but they do get big and clubby and you have to stick them up because they will get pendant okay um, I don't, don't have any of those, no cloisias. Uh, I had a cochleanthus a long, long time ago, but these like good water, good water. So I quickly, cat, cr mine quickly just died. Selogeny, I don't have any selogenies currently. Um, I have one, that, one hybrid, I, yeah, I have one hybrid. I like selogenies. Um, I just find that I can't get the water the water content right because they need a balanced um, sort of like what I just said about um, whatever it was Copelianthes they like good quality water I think because they have leaves that are strapped like leaves that are similar to like an Oncidium Stanhopias although Stanhopias can stand regular water but Selogenies, I think they like more pure water, I think. I did have a few, though, that, like, Cristata was just a, a disaster. Because they like, they grow in high altitudes. And so, it's it's warm here today. But, you know, you try these things thinking that you can grow them just for the fragrance. And because the flower is just beautiful. But you need cool. Intermediate to cool. Nepal... And that's, you know, you know, if you see Nepal. Okay, so I had a Laurentiana that was really, really nice. These like a lot of water. These, the pseudobulbs got a little bit bigger than four inches for me for it to bloom, but really nice one singular flower. Um, my Rihanna, again, similar to Pandaria, Pan, Pandorata, um, except that it's just a different lip very big huge plants um, wandering suit bulbs uh, for me I just can't maintain them there's Pandorata again they like a little bit less when their growths have completed but they bloom from the newly produced suit bulbs and then those suit bulbs after they bloom become um, the suit bulbs after they bloom and it yeah, after they bloom. And it's a long bloom, but the flowers on Pandorata to me, they seem to um, go pretty quickly, in my opinion. And that is the Selogenes. I did not have Comparicia, no Corianthes, no Coribas, no Cryptostylus, no Cipnochis. Okay, Cymbadella is a bucket list plant. Can you see why? So unique. Cymbadella, they go to grow in Madagascar, low altitudes, humid conditions. They are related to Cymbidium, but they do not like a water resting period like some Cymbidiums do. And they still like 
they like watery around, well drained mix. Um, but nice flower. And there is some fragrance, I believe. I had one, I had a couple, and both of them bloomed. Then I had one that I got a division that was really big. But when I was on vacation last year, it fell out of the pot. And um, that destroyed it because they do not like to be repotted. So with this one, what I will probably do is leave it in this. Because when I pull it back, I mean, that sphagnum on the top does not look so good. But underneath it's fine. And I can see roots coming out. If I need to, at some point, I'll probably just set this into another basket. Probably with bark or cocoa husk, maybe. But this is close to blooming size. I wouldn't say that it is a blooming sized plant. Cymbidella. But it's putting up new leaves. And I see roots, as I said. And that's my Cymbidella. Okay. Now, Cymbidiums. Again, I used to have more Cymbidiums. I have, well, I don't have any right now because I have one, but I'm giving it away. And that is the one that I had was the Aleofolium. And really, here with this one, I you, you're supposed to water Well, you can water it all year round, or you don't have to. I've always heard that you um, need to give them a rest in the winter, a little bit cooler of a rest, but I've heard different as well. So I'm not really sure. Um, but I know that you could, they can be grown outside in temperate climates like California and um, different areas like that. But I will skip right on past the Cymbidiums. Big genus. And Cypripedium. I do have Cypripedium outside in the yard. And I won't even go over the culture because Mother Nature takes care of that. But this is the one that I have, Cassiolaris. And these are good for zone five. Where I live, Cypripedium. and I didn't. I, well, I do have a sort of podium, but I'm going to give it away just because I don't think though know, they get huge, and I just don't think I can handle it. The one that I have is not listed here. Maybe it's Punctatum. I'm not sure, but they're huge, and I'll I'll do this one before I show you the sort of podium. This is Sir Torquus, and I lost my Sir Torquus, which is a cross between Chile Ruana and Arcuata. And these are Angricoids. They're from Madagascar, and they have a stem. They, plant, they grow like pandas, like uh, Renantheras. And this the one that I had was mounted, and it really did good. It had gave it dry rest in the winter, it still gave it good light and humidity um, when I bought it out here in the spring it just got killed by the rain and just never recovered the baby plant rotted off and then the mother sort of followed after that but back to the sort of podium I guess you're supposed to grow those kind of like a catacetum but you know it was just so difficult I can't grow catacetum so I don't know why I was even trying to grow this but this is the sort of podium right here with these big pseudobulbs it did have a growth that came up and the growth is here, kind of maturing actually, it's back there rotting. But that's that, and I don't want to spend too much time on that because it's it's an ex-plant of mine, and that cat layer here is not going to stay straight. Get it together, Miss Mahler. But anyway, that's it, I believe. We'll go back over and check it out. But that's probably the end of C. Thank you all for listening to this little lesson from the Bible of orchids. Yeah, next week we'll be on D, and D will give us dendrobiums and other dicheas and visas and other D plants. So, hopefully you have, hope you've learned something on your C letter orchids, and have enjoyed this so far. Thank you for having breakfast with me and thank you for watching. Enjoy your orchids.